I'd like to introduce to you Les Roca, my good friend from Dunedin. And before we show his program, North Holt Junction, as a prelude, I'd like to show a little bit of a video that he sent me to show his hometown, Dunedin. Here is Dunedin Railway Station, and then with a sudden jump of about five or six miles, we arrive at Fairfield, the suburb where he lives, or lived, because he would have moved from there by the time you see this. That's the courthouse. Again, you can see the typical English type of building or Scotch type of building. We'll be making a right-hand turn down towards our place. As soon as that road's clear, we'll haul around, but as you can see there, we do have some traffic. Now making that right hand turn into Flower Street and we're getting very close to home now. This would be a fairly typical New Zealand suburb. We hang a left at this corner and then we'll have to pull a, make a right hand turn here into our entrance way which is just coming into sight now and this is home this is our driveway we just got a gravel drive 100 meters long off the street That's the box where all your letters go in. Right in front of you is one of the chicken houses. A gateway that leads down to the bottom part of the section. And there is our place. Open the front door. And that's me. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Come in. Come and have a look. The usual amount of junk in the place too, I might add. Still making progress here, but still quite a long way to go. But at least we can run some trains now, and uh, it's starting to get interesting. Sorting the books and papers still going on, of course. Uh, the first 12 months in any house is always an upset, and to come into a new one, of course, is, is quite harrowing at times. Right. This is the North Old Junction Railway in Fairfield in Dunedin. It's been built to bring back a bit of nostalgia from where I live. North Old Junction is the junction of the Great Central and the Great Western Railway. The other side is Harrow and Wembley, which is the other half, which is the LMS side. Uh, the LMS is my favourite railway that I model mostly, uh, together with the underground trains, and which my father drove for many, many years under London and the likes of the tram is also just pure nostalgia. Um, it's done just for my own pleasure and uh, it's taken something like two years to put together what's here now, but I've actually been modelling for about 60 years. Well, we're starting looking at uh, North Holt Junction here. In front of us, Roker Quarries Limited. I'm advised are made from scratch built mainly with axles and uh, wheels being purchased. I'll just move across here to the station building on the far side. What's the station building, uh, Les? Is that uh, car? 
this is made out of cow, purely out of my head, and not literally, um, but it's uh, made up from the designs that, as I remember it, and I sketch them out, draw them, and then make them all from scratch. Now we're looking across there at the Typhoon Tea Tram, and down the uh, the line and out of North Holt Junction. North Holt engine shed, uh, this parked outside the 262 tank loco and behind it an 060 shunting locomotive and beyond that the North Holt bus station. And as we go around from North Holt bus station, we look at a few other buildings that are situated in this corner of the layout, and lo and behold we come across JL Ray Limited Publishers. I wonder who that could be. And there the line goes out through the tunnel mouth and into the garden. And coming in from the garden, the rail runs past a line of shops. We notice a a uh, shop there which is of interest to Mr. Dixon C.W. Dixon Limited just next to Conrad B. Roker L. Parks and Son Wilmont and Company F. Deans and Son and up and towards Harrow and Wembley and there parked in the station throat is the Deltic Diesel. As we move along the layout, a Clawton parked behind the Class 33. And then the Harrow and Wembley Station, a collection of various goods wagons and cholesterol coaches. Coming out of the garden, we head up along the line past the shops towards the Harrow and Wembley station track. And seeing the station is full today, we've been directed down a sideline towards Watney's Brewery. Here comes Lewis Corton. And following close behind is the Delta with its rate of cholesterol cases heading out towards the garden. And out onto the garden line. And there's the Croton pulling its rate of cholesterol coaches as it goes around the garden line. There's uh, Les's underground set running past the bus station. And there's tram whisking along. And once again leaving the station is that fine underground electric set. of January 1992 and I'm sitting with George Barlow and his house in New Romney and we're going to look at some cine film that I took during the 1970s. This was the very first cine photography film that I ever did on the Romney Heights and Dimchurch. Where are we here George? Oh we're in Hythe car park at the moment. That was the 
when we had a BR coach for the shop, but that didn't last very long. In fact, I'd forgotten all about it until I saw your film. Yeah, there are a lot of things. Now you're looking along the station platforms, of course. Yeah. A lot of things here that I'd almost forgotten until I got the show. Ah, oh, where are we here? Well, you're just near the turntable on what we call the Table Road, and Peter Smith, driving Samson's, just turned. Peter later on took over the sin and drove us for several years. He now drives the bus for the East Kent, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I was waiting, actually, this morning for you to come up with the goddess. I think it was about half an hour, an hour later, that you came in with the goddess. Yes, she's on here a bit later, yes. And this is which one? This, this is, is Samson's Sam backing down in under platform four, which is which is interesting because uh, the, the platform's not used anymore. The road was taken up in the reorganisation at high a year or two later when the crossovers were moved out and the table points were connected up to the signal box and mm -hmm. the signals were altered. Yeah, that train's standing in number four. Well, we've just done a Guild programme, and you tell a lot more details about this, but if I remember rightly, you joined the railway about 1946, didn't you? Yeah, oh, yes, I actually got the job in 46, yeah. yes. Oh, I've moved a little way down the line here, haven't I? Yes, yeah, you're near the table points, and yeah. uh, Peter's just pulling out of the station. That it's still quite a picturesque little spot yeah. at High Station. Judging by those trees, I would say we're probably more July, wouldn't you? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Full. Yeah, one of those trees is a cherry plum tree, and it bears fruit every two years, I think, and they all fall all over the track, all these cherry plums. Captain Harry used to pick them up and eat them. <laughs> yeah. Of course, slipping, I reckon, wouldn't they, in wet weather? Uh, well, I don't think it ever got that bad, because mm. they wouldn't... Um, drop onto the rails, you know, the, the roll off the rails in most cases. Yeah. You seldom run over one, but you often trod on one when you're walking around. <laughs> yeah. uh, now here I am coming in with the goddess. Yeah. Now I had this engine for 31 years without a break, which is probably some kind of record. And you took her back to the ratty, didn't you? Yeah, so that was since I retired. Yes. Yeah, that's since yeah. I retired, yeah. Yeah, that was quite something. Who's that having a lift? That's John Denmark. Uh, he was the signalman, and he used to uh, jump on the engine step often as you ran in, or he stood down the platform waiting for you, and uncoupled you, then rode back on the up to the signal box on the tender step. There's a goddess rolling onto the table, yeah. and to get her balanced right, you had to put the radial boxes under the cab there on the centre of the table, like that, and then it was a piece of cake, and that's young John pushing me around. Yeah. How, yeah. how critical was that centre? I mean, how, how far could you go either side of centre and still move her? Oh, quite a bit really, but it was so much easier if, yeah. you, if you stopped her just where she's standing now. And of course this is a wonderful opportunity to get down and feel all the bearings, look at your springs, you could see it so yeah. much easier, look, you see. And I used to take a piece of rag in my hand so I could always wipe off superfluous oil before it was thrown all under the running plate. So I used to check bearings and springs and have a wipe off at the same time. Didn't she now beautiful? that must have been a special train because she's got express headboards up. Yes. Miriam was intrigued because I'm smoking a cigarette there in 1973. I didn't yes. I didn't realise I smoked so late. When did you give up smoking in? Ah, uh, well, I don't really know. In the 70s. I, oh, I think say. I've beaten you by 10 years. You picked up in the 60s. Now, I'm in the leading carriage yeah, here, this George. Yeah, the goddess pulling out over the crossovers. Of course, this is all being altered. That crossover's a long, a much further uh, distance from the station now. And you've got semaphores. Now, this is the quickest journey I've ever done from Yeah, running, running into Romney. And of course, all this is history. That train shed's gone. The, yes, the, isn't the, it? The road down from the shed going through the platforms, that's all gone. Yeah. There's now a loop there. 
You know, you say, just do a little tiny slip. <laughs> Didn't course, last you, long. No, well, you've got a superheater in between the regulator and the uh, and the cylinders, of course, so there's always that much steam left, even if you close the regulator. George, one thing I'd like to ask you, what is the general practice about opening and closing your steam cocks? When, when do you close them? You keep them open until you're, uh, until you're obtaining dry steam. You know, what you don't want is, is water in the cylinders. Exactly. So you, you're so watching if what? If the engine's hot and she's come in, you wouldn't bother to open them, probably to restart, after no. standing for a couple of minutes while the engine's still hot. But if you stand for any length of time, and of course it varies with the weather. If you've got a cold northeast wind blowing on the cylinder covers, the cylinders will get really cold, and a superheater engine takes more warming up than a, a saturated one. So you get condensation. Yeah. Now, I don't know what I'm doing here. You've caught me walking along the platform. Yes, I remember that. Um, had you been down to the office, because you're over the other side. Oh, no. look, the water tank's still over that side. Yeah, that's right. What's this coming in? That's Hercules, driven by Ron Brins. Um, she was painted in a brightish red at that time, as you can see, and it was, I believe it was Docker's paint, but we had awful trouble with it. It was it flaking, wasn't it? It fell off in big lumps. You can see it yes. by the oh, safety yes, valves. It looked, it looked awful. It's Tony. Tony, Tony Crowhurst, yes, he yeah. was a uh, traffic manager. But he looked that young. <laughs> and that's, that's Ron Prins, who didn't last very long. He wasn't very fit, or chap, and... Um, hey, what's I'll that coming in? Uh, that was Samson with uh, Peter Smith. Coming in from Dimchurch. Coming in from Dungeness. Uh, Dungeness, I mean, sorry. Off the single line, he's under the, he's under the tablet. You've actually got the two four eight two there on, in one shot. Yes, it is, isn't it? Now Ron Prince is. What a the normal thing is, of course, if you're standing for any length of time, middle gear and cocks open, of course. He's got his cocks open, but... Uh, he won't have the one for very long. Just blow the condensate out the cylinders. Yes. yes. You don't want that blown off. Yeah, shame about that paint. That did look a mess. Yes, just look at it there. That shows yeah. it well. And that tender's gone. That's scrapped. Hercules now runs with an original Greenlee tender. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, there goes Samson with Peter Smith. You've obviously walked from one end of the station to the other and got him just leaving. Yeah, but of course... He's one, going to hide now. What we have to remember is that these shots were taken all sorts of different days. Yeah. Spread over weeks and months, some of them. Yes, when the coal was delivered in those days, it often rolled down onto the track, and you'll see it in one of your shots later on. But they put a, a wall now to prevent that happening. Yeah. New Romney That's before come. the roof was damaged in the sheds, isn't it? Yes, that's right, yes. Now, what's coming in here? Uh, I'll tell you when she gets here. Number two, Northern Chief. Johnny Pickles riding on the engine with Richard Button driving. Ah, Richard, that's the one. Ah, oh, there's Peter. Yes, Peter, yes. Yeah, there goes Richard to turn with the Chief. Yeah. That's before he took over the hurricane. And there they are. That's on the original Linton and Barnstable table. No, that's the best that's shot Laurie Hick, Hicks on the right, foreman plate there. He's uh, yeah. passed away now, coming out the out the building. And of course, that's Peter Hobson. And that was the year he was killed. It was the week, George. Was it? Was it really? It was the week because it was on the Sunday. My wife came up with the news. Yeah, and he was killed on Samson. That's right. Well, that was August 73, and I've got the exact That's date. It. Yes, and yeah. um, there goes Peter. Yeah, always with the red bandana handkerchief around his head, yes, wasn't he? As you know, of course, he had a wonderful O-Gage railway up in Attic I rooms. spent a few hours up there. In his house, so have <laughs> Sucking his beer. <laughs> so have I, yes. Uh, well, they're, they're coaling up the chief on the table road for some reason there. Now there's Richard Button again with number two, Northern Chief. Yeah. 
That was the engine that was ordered along with Green Goddess by Count Louis Zabowski before the railway was even started. There goes the chief in Highland Greens, or Napier Green. Yes, and the, uh, how do you describe that tender with the sort of cut-out side? Um, Hasn't got well, the wrap-over tender. No, no, that's the original uh, Greenly tender. Yeah. Only 150 gallons of water. You see there how the coal get used to get oh, down yes. up to delivery. I see what you mean. Yeah, the lorry used to come round over the track and, and uh, tip it. Of course, later on we've altered that. How many of the engines were built by Greenley? Um, well, all of them were designed by Greenley. Um, what, the American ones as well? Oh, they were designed by him, yes. Were they? I didn't oh, yes. realise that. Yes. Now, he's got empty stock boards up. And that's Peter Sutherton riding on the sim with me for some reason and she noticed that she's running without any lettering on the tender. And you'll notice that she's very light on her feet. She gets on a bit of oily rail just here, look, look. See? <laughs> but of course the thing to do is not to slam the regulator closed. You just ease it down until the engine stops slipping. Um, Yeah, that's a very interesting shot, that. Well, it's all interesting now, of course. Yes, of course it's it is. It's all history. But we had to get something to go and push her in, if you remember. Did we? Yes, send another engine up to push her in. She couldn't shift it. Yeah. Yeah, I think we had too much weight on the bogey and radio. She's obviously just out of shots, I would think, yeah, because the lettering has not been put on the tender. Yeah. Now that's Roger Constant walking out the door there. He's no no longer with us. And the lady worked in the office, didn't she? What is she <laughs> one of the clerks there? <coughs> ah, I just caught a turn. It's Hawkins, wasn't it? The uh, yeah. chap we just saw. That's, the, and that's Peter Go going. Back a bit. Ah, now I'm on the footplate with you. That's right. And you never took a shot of me firing. Oh, it was one much room, wasn't it? <laughs> no, I didn't. That's quite true. It was as much. I got my feet braced against the uh, uh, the back plate, and I got my back braced against the tent, and trying to hold that camera steady. Yeah, the only way you can do this really is clamp the camera to the engine. I'm sure of that. Yeah, so probably true. So the engine true. and camera go together, I think. Now, somewhere along here... That's St Mary's Bay, on the up. We just stopped at the bay. Yeah. Somewhere along here, you threw a handful of dust on the fire for me. Yes, I know that. <laughs> I used to do that all the time for photographers. Yeah. You see Ron Prince do the same thing a bit later on at the Warren Bridge. That's right. I asked but him he, to do that. He put it on a bit too early, and, of course, by the time you, the engine was close to, yeah. the chimney had cleared. I used to keep a little bit of dust just round the corner on my tender for photographic purposes. <laughs> yes, going towards Dimchurch now. Yes, that's it, yeah. Plodding up the... It's just one mile from St Mary's Bay to Dimchurch. And you're running by the Golden Sands holiday camp. Yes. For whom the bell tolls. Oh dear, I forgot about that. That's all right. Remind me of this morning, George, when I get old, you know. <laughs> <coughs> well, you're much older than I am, aren't you? Oh, yeah. A good three months. <laughs> there we are. Yeah. <laughs> and the curious thing, I was dressed in sort of city clothes, white shirt and... <laughs> and my lounge suit, and, and Nora always knew when I'd been down here, she said, your cuffs and collar. <laughs> <laughs> you should never go near engines, you know, without overalls. Well, Even a smock coat is a good idea. Yeah. And button it up at the neck. Well, when I used to go down the fire on the Bluebell with John, of course, he gave me a complete set of dungarees and, yeah. and cap. But uh, after all, I'd been working all day here in the schools, or what I call work, yeah. And then I finish about half past three and come and spend three hours here. Yes, I used to have a smock coat with a big safety pin 
and then pin the neck up tight and then yeah, you could we wear We might a... see that. Uh, where are, are we here? We're... Are we just going over, um, well in a moment you'll be going over Golden Sands Bridge. Ah. One of the bridges that's been replaced of course in recent years. The end of these buildings you go over a dike. Here we go, look, over the bridge. Can you see it? Yes. Is that the one in the Guild program that we see being replaced uh, with the cranes and... No, no that's no, Duke not the of... Um, no, we've done five bridges. Now you're running into Dimchurch on the up road yeah. and of course that station roof's gone. Has that it? Station's been, oh yes, that station's been completely rebuilt. It really bangs home to you how much has been done since this film was taken. Amazing, that footbridge has been completely renewed. Um, now the other American type engine is on its way up at the same time as we can see from the crossing. Yeah, that's right, number nine, yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill. And she was oil fired, wasn't she, at the time? Was, e was that the one that was oil fired? Yeah, well, yes, I would say she was, because she <coughs> certainly oil fired later on, and Peter Mullinger's uh, driving up. Now, think of it, George, that little child is now in her late 70s, 20s. Um, oh, yeah? She'd be about three. Yeah. No, she'd be, be about 23 now. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, he's uh, he's got to cross the line now and stop traffic to the other way. Yeah, well, there, of course, you've got signals and, uh, and crossing yeah. lights. Now, that's Cyril Stevens flagging the road. He died later that year. Poor old Cyril. And he was a station master there the day when Peter Hobson was killed and rang me up and told me what had happened. Oh? He said he's just heard a big bang and escaping steam and he says something terrible's happened. How far from there did it happen? At the crossing before that one. Oh. In other words, back towards Romney. That was number nine just running in, so yes. you've got the two American type Pacifics on one but to film there. No, you take this it. was unusual for you to be working this engine, wasn't it? Yes, I must have been running it in, I think. Uh, I, I used to run in all the locos when they came out of shops. Yeah. I remember Tony coming into Motherland one afternoon and he said, we've got a very rare privilege for you, we've given you a footplate pass. I'd like to go out with George one day. Uh, but didn't they didn't hand them out with Green Shield stamps, did they? Oh no. On that railway? Oh no. No, we were asked by the Ministry to be, you know, yeah. a little careful about that. Running into Hyde, of course, on the up, with yes. number 10. Yes, this is where we came in. Sun always shone in films and... Would it have been marvellous if it had video cameras in these days? I know. But this particular one, I think, is perhaps one of the best I took. There's I'd a signal, when you see, walking down, yes. the wrong couple. Yes, um, get a free ride. And come back on the tender step. But um, for some reason we, we discouraged that and later on the uh, driver always uncoupled himself. Now I, I remember that, those truck boxes were carrying too much weight, the pair of wheels under the cab. Yes. And they were running warm and you notice I've given them an extra drop of cylinder oil and you see how light she is on a few yes. And of course, that's Barlow on the scene. Hi, oh, George. <laughs> <laughs> now here, oh, now we've gone right now the way here, the other end. We're putting the train together. This is obviously the Madisons, and it would be a Tuesday. And you don't bother with much in the way of filming till you get to Romney. Then you, we go out to Madisons on the Dunstan Road, and then we propel back. That's it, yeah. With no passengers in, of course. That's right, empty stock, yeah. yeah. Well, of course, now there's a run-round loop there, so you can run round and come back down ah. the first. But you see, there I'm gently propelling back, which I never liked doing, but that's where we are. If it had been video in those days, of course, where yeah. you could, you've got three hours of tape, you could just oh, no. have kept the camera running, but this... There, yeah, I'm even pushing, then. there, I'm pushing the set up the shed side, yeah. then dividing it, leaving half of it... Who's that coming that's in? That's Ron Prince running in with the Hercules. Now, this is where, in the Guild programme, I talk about how accurate you've got to be in placing oh, your train. Oh, absolutely, yes. I'm taking the next morning's 
11.30 set into the run round and you had to stop the engine to within six inches yep. to get round it, to get round the set. And of course, with the big tendon engines, there was just room over the point blades between the point blades and the, and the buffer stops. That's it. That's what I'm trying to film in a minute when I got off the engine. That's right, yes. Yes, you had to bang on. We used to have a little mark and we used to stop stop the tender step, like we did for the water columns. You used to have a little mark and stop the tender step. And we had to have two marks, one for little tender steps yeah. and one for big tender steps. Yeah, this is where you've got to be absolutely bang on where you stop. Well, the leading coach, I remember, was just into that curve. That's right. And yes, still preserving the six-foot way, as it were. That's right. That's right. Yes, here she Now, goes. you see, you've just got room for the engine and tender between those point blades and the buffer stops. They're knock points, aren't they? Or spring points. Spring points, yeah. Spring points, yes. Yeah. That's all gone now, of course. Yes, of course. Well, that happened you shortly see, after. She is a bit slippery, the old girl. Yeah, isn't she? I remember those truck boxes running very warm, but that's quite common with those engines. And yep. too much weight. Well, yes, you can see the blades just yeah. saw them flip that's back. Right. That's right. And I don't know that gollywog is riding on my tender step. Probably a temporary uh, signal. It's a bit dark. A lot of these youngsters had very, very long hair at that time. It used to seem to me quite silly to even bother to put a hat on because three quarters of the hair was outside it. Ah, oh, this was on, I think that's Hawkins, that white shirt on the... Yes, uh, yeah. Oh, that's Ron Prince on the up with the Hercules. At Romney. Look, there's someone filming. We're on BBC. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can see that flake paint there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we tried a set of iron wheels. Is that the... Peter? Yes. I thought it was. I, I couldn't see the red. And that's me running in with the goddess. Yes, yeah, with the goddess. He's gone up to set the road, obviously, for some... Oh, probably to set the road for the table for me. This makes but this... At this time, there were just odd new coaches about before we... There were enough to make a... A, a rake, train. a complete yeah. rake, so the coach, the trains are a bit messy, one of this and one of that. Because <laughs> and someone putting a new film in and getting a lovely shot up his nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> now, who who do you say that, Pete? That's Ron Prince. Oh, Ron. Yeah, well, he was the one who were coming back. I was on the train, you see, I'd left the car up at Hyde, yeah. and I came back to the, is it the Warren Bridge? Yeah, and he put the dust on. And he it. put the dust on. Yeah. That's right, and he put it on a bit too soon. <laughs> Never mind, I've got it. Oh yes, you got it, yeah. Uh, still before the water tower was moved, didn't it? Oh yes. Oh, this is 73, you see, we didn't start till 74. No. Um, well, 73, 74 winter, all the alterations at Romney. Well, 74, I didn't get down to you, Romney, but you know, George, it's incredible how often the headmaster of the second of the uh, comprehensive school, a new Romney needed to see me. He was always <laughs> needing to see me. <laughs> I had an awful job explaining that to the firm. Yeah. I remember you getting me a room in um, Red Tiles. Captain Howie's old house, yeah. which was then a hotel, wasn't it? Red Tiles, yes. Run by a chap named Ciccone. Yes. And I'd been in. Now, in this the... is funny. Ron Prince in this shot, never gets down to examine his engine underneath, and he does an unforgivable thing. He pokes the fire about on the turntable, which was absolutely forbidden. And I never found out, you see, for 19 years until I saw <laughs> Until this. you saw this. <laughs> but, of course, that knocks ashes down through the bars onto the bearing, the centre bearing of the table. Of course. Uh, that's got ball bearings, that tender, it's, that's pretty easy to tell. Do you think we can produce an evidence in court? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you never know when you're being watched, do you? It's rather funny, I'll, a chap came down one day and made a film of the railway, and um, Bob Hobbs drove the goddess for one day, and he had a footplate passenger. And when I saw this film, oh, well, that was Ron, topping up his lubricator. Where are we here? Uh, Bottle Bridge Road. Yeah. 
Yeah, I saw old Bob Hobbs with a footplate passenger on my engine, and when I saw him, I said, who was that bloke you had on the goddess when I, on my day off? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, funny, that one. Yeah, that's yes, possibly this was evening. Road, this looking should... towards Romney now. This will be about flash... five o'clock, half past five. Yeah, we've got flashing lights there, yes. Yeah. Flashing lights now, and of course that was the bridge that you saw being renewed, and just uh, the dike is just a short yeah. distance from the crossing. Now here's the Warren. You're at the Warren Bridge. Same, same train. Your favourite. They are. There he is, yes. And he puts the slack on a bit too soon. By the time he actually comes by, you notice the chimney's clear. Yes, yeah. Getting along there, isn't he? Oh, yes. Well, they'll go. Those 482s are just as fast as the Pacifics, really. Wear themselves out a bit quicker. Bottle Spritch again, yes. looking towards Hyers. You've got one or two rather unusual workings here, it would appear. Um, whistling up for the road. One thing about the Romney engines, they have full size whistles. That's number nine in black. Yeah. Oh, now that's possibly doing the oil burning trials, I would think. Well, I tell you when we can be sure, when we see the engine coming with a buffer missing. That's right. Because Snell was telling me that the driver had not got used to the oil burning and he held the whole schedule up. So about three trains late. It came in 45 minutes down. He'd limped the whole way from, well, pretty well highs that yeah. day. That's quite right. That's uh, Peter Mullinger, the bloke who designed the oil burner, is uh, doing the driving in that shop. Now, look, that's empty stock. Number 10, running with Five, only five coaches. That, that must be the return of a special, I would yeah. think. Oh, there's old Jack, Jack Scrivener. Yeah, what he's doing is, I see those ships. I know, I can see <laughs> what he's doing. <laughs> well, this is obviously still just 73, and um, old Jack doing his act, and then you get a shot showing the original old layout. Yeah. Well, I used to relieve him at Model Land so he could do a bit of repairs in the workshop. They are. Now, that shows the road still from the loco yard coming down through the platform. Yeah. That means that's pre-74. And then that shot is obviously 75 because as you zoom back, you get a little bit of the, they are, the new roofing. Yes, which that's right. In it, the new so shed. That absolutely dis um, decides where your film goes from 73 to 75. Yes. So now we're in 75. You're... Ah, oh, now what's now, this? This is interesting, that engine's running into the new loop. It's the Hurricane. The Blue Pacific. That's interesting, that shows how much light comes through those transparent sheets Doesn't on it? the roof. I'm on telephoto there. Oh, I'm zooming back now. Yes. That was a very good lens, actually. Ten to one zoom. So I could make a thousand yards, a hundred yards. Yes. That's Richard Button driving. is now moved up from the Chief to the Hurricane. Now, you see, he's not... He's kept the cops closed because the engine's hot and also... Um, it was an order not to have the ah, cops look at the stop too. Yeah, well now you've got a complete train of the teaks, whereas well, so there were just yeah. odd ones in 73. But they didn't start building them until 73. Now that engine's a heck of a way out there. I'm on full um, yes. telephoto. Yes. Well, that, the, the loop points there in the foreground. Yes. You zoom back in a moment. That shows the loop, and he's running in on the main line. 
I can remember stooping down over my camera tripod and Tony Cannon back behind me said, Oh, J. Arthur Rank still has it. <laughs> now, who's that? Well, that's the maid. Southern maid. Southern maid. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I think it's Eric Copping's son. He came and had a week's holiday with his father. And I think he's, I think Eric's just about somewhere. Uh, you'll see him j jump on the step in a few minutes. And he's uh, obviously shifting the stock out of the way. I don't recognise the young lad. But with the long hair? No. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the maid. Of course, she had new nameplates. She was the only one that had new curved nameplates. Of course, she had smoke deflectors for some years with uh, straight nameplates. Oh, I'd forgotten The original that. nameplates had gone, so she had new nameplates. Mm -hmm. And of course that's history, that tender's gone, scrap that she's got there. Yeah. Yeah, that's Eric Copping, he's uh, dead and gone I'm afraid. Riding on the step Is there. Is that the one we've got in the Guild programme where you show his last driving Yes, to, uh, yes. That, I thought it he was. He was only 51 when he died. Yes. Now, Peter Smith has now taken over the sin, and he kept her very well always, and uh, there she is outside uh, the shed. You see him mopping off, he's got a washing up mop and a bucket of splotch, yeah. which is a mixture of paraffin and oil. And there's the chief running in. Do you, by any chance, remember me bringing John Hart over? Um, it'd be about 1965, long before these films made, and I, went, I don't know whether it was you, but someone, in, when they found he had been the, he was the chief driver on the Bluebell, invited him into the sheds. Oh yes, John Snell managing Oh, this Snell, yes. He's just collected the Dungeness takings from the driver. That, so that must be the last train. Yeah, well now this is when we had trouble with the oil fire. Yeah, you'll see. This was the day. Yeah, that's um, that was when John Bryce started to drive the old burner, and he got in the most awful pickle with it. Yeah, it's an entirely different technique. As Peter Smith waving, waving to the driver on the GP. It's nice to know who all these people are. But... Ah, what's this? Well, uh, the plate there's having a bit of a shunt up. I can see. Here comes a Churchill. Yeah, now you see, I've got old. this on full zoom. Yeah, and well, Snell was standing behind me, and I said, She's lost a buffer. He said, How can you tell? That? That's, yeah. I said, Well, I've got it on full zoom. Yeah. And they found the buffer lying in the six foot up at Hythe. Yeah, well. There's quite a story attached to that because I was on the engine when I lost the buffer originally when I, I clouted a car at Dimchurch. Oh? And um, I think I put a new buffer head in and I don't know quite what happened, whether the, uh, the little set screw, you know, sheared or what. But Peter Mullinger is actually doing the driving and I'm coming in, look here. Yes. You were well, all piled it. up, stacked up behind one another. Yeah. Oh, he paralysed the... Uh... I was a bit surprised that he propelled that stock into the station on one buffer. Yeah, well, I don't think that would matter terribly. Um, here's the goddess coming in the loop. Well, we're just having some hot weather here. Yes, it was a lovely week. Used to take some sticking, you know, the heat on the footplate, sitting on top of a fire all day yeah. long. You were absolutely wet through. Uh, here she comes. Yeah, well, I was driving that engine when it lost that buffer originally. Yeah, John Bryce was the man, but he he conquered the old burner and uh, he became very proficient with it. He could even relight it 
going along. Oh? Uh? If the flame ever went out. You notice she's now red instead of black, number yes. nine? Yes, that's right. She was black in 73. Yeah, that's John Bryce, definitely, uh -huh. over on the fireman's side. And then they had a little conference at the front of the engine, a few of the... Yeah, shed. well, he was smoking badly when he came in. I, um, he had to sand those uh, flues, uh, tubes and flues, what, to get up there in the day. Mm. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> right. Now that's Robert Payne, uh, plate layer, driving the simplex tractor which came from the Eaton Railway, and that's this trick, and it still has its cab on there. That two was um, removed in a slight accident. Yeah. A year or two later. That's uh, number six, isn't it, Sammy? That looked like Robin Casey driving there. Yeah. Of course, I could never get down here early. Bodies onto the shed. Yeah. It was always late afternoon and evening when I was here. Yeah. Uh, it was all right well, with the I, sun this as side. As I said earlier on, that's the engine I drove for 31 years. And you know just how clean <laughs> she is after a day's work. Everything was clean sometime during the day. Window yes. frames look, safety valves. He looked very happy there. Yeah. <coughs> I reckon. Yes. Richard Button. Now look how clean that engine is, and she's been out all day, probably done about 73 miles on turn one. Yes, probably the passengers think you put it on. Yeah, look at that. That's me having a Guinness. Yeah, never left me a drop. <laughs> I'm having a Guinness and my sandwiches before I get stuck in and start mopping off. <laughs> look at that white collar. <laughs> now, who's working the camera here? I left it on the tripod. I left it running. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh. And then we're joined by... Um, Richard Button. Richard, that's right. We all look a bit younger. Don't we, but look, I've got a grey hair. <laughs> isn't that, <laughs> that's amazing. Isn't it? Mind you, that... What I didn't realise then, I'd only got another five years to go with Collins, this and is, I thought I'd got ten. This is 17 years ago, is it? Yes. She's coming on the shed. <coughs> Says how they used to come in at night. We used to peel off all Pull the them through. And, Yes. And then they, then we had to get stuck in and clean them, sweep the tubes. Well, you always groom your horse before you make yourself comfortable, don't oh, you? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. And the old gathering. Yeah, lovely sight. Well, that's the end of it. Well, and now I would like to take you for a few minutes to Manchester to look at what I think is quite a remarkable feature. Some years ago, when I was staying with Joe Brown, he showed me a turntable that he had built, a most ingenious arrangement with a number of rotary switches which controlled not only speed but which track the uh, table stopped at and so on. He'd even got two human figures, one on the windlass, Mr. Turner, and Mr. Locke, who actually throws the locking lever. But as he moves like street lightning, you've got to be very quick to see him actually do it. Now, the reason why I'm intruding this voiceover in this program is that Peter Ainley made this video uh, back in 1988 uh, against the noise that usually... Uh, happens at these exhibitions. So it's quite impossible to hear any sort of commentary. And what we are watching here is one or two tanks, the 062 now moving on to the turntable. And then in a moment or two you will see a princess, 6200, move onto the table and you'll see the complete revolution of the turntable. What impressed me about it is the beautiful, realistic speed at which everything is done. 
far too often turntables move at a frightening speed. Uh, there's a jubilee going on. And now in a moment we shall see the princess come onto the table. Well, there we are, Joe Brown's Turntable and Motive Power Depot at the Manchester Model Railway Show. In a moment, I want to bring this program to a finish very much as I started it in New Zealand. The film which you saw of Les Rokerslau was made by Warren Eagleton and here is what he added to that Les Roker uh, sequence so that I could see the exhibition. And here is another great example of his superb craftsmanship in this New Zealand steam like a man of. on Western Deep Cars like Mary. Thank you. 
Gate version of Dunedin Railway Station. And on the other side of the layout, uh, Wingapui Station. And in Gate. Let's have a closer look at this layout. This is a large HO layout. And starting at one end, we'll move through and have a look at the layout from one end to the other. Firstly, we have a log mill at one end. And as the rails progress through the tunnel now, they progress down the other the video program that you're watching now and the one that started this tape on Les Rocas Northhold Junction were both made by an acquaintance of mine in New Zealand Warren Eagleton. He's a great friend of Professor Cyril Dixon, whose model railway appears in another video. At one time, Cyril Dixon lived in Dunedin, very near Les Roca, and they saw very much more of each other. And then Cyril moved to North Island to Onorahi, and he and Warren Eagleton have made quite a number of videos together. I thought you might like to see what Warren Eagleton looks like and so when this clip finishes I'm going to put on a silent uh, sequence as it were of Warren introducing a quite different program which he sent me a year or two ago. What he says is totally irrelevant to this program but at least you can see what he's like. And there is Warren Eagleton talking to me from New Zealand, oh, about 1983, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> 